Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, more US troops headed our way. Our special relationship with the US reaches the moving in stage. Why the European Commission thinks citizens have a right to be forgotten online. And does the Liberal Party have a cash flow problem? Our panel tonight, Four Corners reporter Sarah Ferguson, Tim Wilson from the Institute of Public Affairs and New South Wales Labor MP Luke Foley. US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has left Australia after talks on defence and security issues were held in Melbourne. The war in Afghanistan was one of the main topics discussed at the annual Ausmin talks, along with cyber security and relations with China. A deal allowing US forces greater access to Australian ports and military bases was also announced, and US Defence Secretary Robert Gates and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton praised their Australian counterparts who hosted the event and stressed the importance of their alliance. This alliance has never been more important, and the ties between our two nations and our two militaries, bonds of shared culture, interests, and values, give me great confidence that we stand ready to confront the challenges of this new century, as we have in the past. And confronting the challenges of this century looks like meaning more US ships coming to Australia, more joint operations, and more military personnel based here. Now, Tim, 20 years ago, people would have been up in arms about this kind of thing. What, what do you think the reaction from the Australian people will be? I don't think it'll be up in arms. I think most people will be relatively calm about it. I mean, the reality is the US already has uh, some forms of presence in Australia and uh, from a defence interest perspective, Australia needs the US and could also... Uh, it will stop... You know, potential increase in the amount of military spending we need to spend. And, and from the US perspective, the, it's a reciprocal arrangement. I mean, if you actually watch what's happened in the US since uh, the congressional elections and how much there's going to be a focus on cutting back the budget and cutting back the deficit, uh, the US needs to find ways uh, to save money, and maybe this is one of the ways to do it. But if the choice for most Australians between increased US pre uh, presence through sharing bases or the US's own bases... I think most Australians are going to go with the former. That's, that's true, Tim, but it's not the case, is it, that this is a discussion that's just begun after the midterm elections. It's a discussion that's been going on for some time between Australia and the US. And I know the Americans were very keen today mm. and yesterday to say this is not about China, this is not about China, but this is largely about China, the US and Australia too. Obviously well, very concerned about... It, it's actually the about the spending. region. I mean, we keep yeah. hearing phrases like this is the Pacific century, but in large part it's actually true. And it is about... Yeah. China, but it's also about Korea, North Korea, and it's also about Taiwan, and it's also about a whole series of things, some of which are a consequence of China, but some of which are not. But, you know, the US is going to beef up its military presence here um, for obvious and logical reasons. This is going to be where a lot of the foray is going to be in terms of pot or potential conflict, I will say. Luke, is it, all about, is it all about China? Well, when you look at China, I'd say you go back to first principles about why we have an alliance with the United States. Both Australia and the US are pluralist democracies. There's a shared commitment in both countries to freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, an independent judiciary, equality before the law, human rights. That's both our countries at their best. Now, I'm not by any means an uncritical uh, uncritical when it comes to the US. As a, as a social democrat committed to egalitarianism, I, there are some aspects of US society that I'd be critical of, the great disparities between extreme wealth and, and the working poor. But I support the alliance because we are both pluralist democracies. China isn't. China combines the repressive apparatus of the Soviet Union with crony capitalism in the last couple of decades. Um, and so there are shared values that underpin the Australian-American alliance. There's good reasons for it. And, and Sarah, as part of um, that alliance, no doubt a big part of the, the talks today would have been about troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. Well, clearly that has to have been part of the conversation today. And again, this is a conversation that's very difficult for them to have publicly. Look what happened to Obama when he came out and said he'd, he'd fixed a date for the, at least the beginning of the American withdrawal in the summer of next year in, in America. Immediately, the military 
honed in on that statement. There was a lot of discussion about it being a very bad mm. idea to set a timetable. Obama then adjusted his language. This is not really about withdrawal. This is about starting to withdraw. So where we fit into that picture with our uh, joint operations with the Americans in Oregon, it's a very important question for us, and I know, we'll hear more about what happened behind that's, closed doors today. That's for, that's for sure. And yesterday, the US Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, attended a Q&A session with young Australians at the University of Melbourne, and she was asked her thoughts about the burqa. And it was a pretty interesting response from an old-school feminist. She didn't talk about the oppression of women, but instead answered the question in the t context of the fight against terrorism. She said, I know that in Pakistan, many of the men who are conducting suicide bombing missions arrive covered in a burqa. Sarah, what did you make of that response? Well, first of all, you, you talk about Hillary Clinton, the old, fem the old leftist feminist. There's been very little of that Hillary Clinton for any, for mm, any sure. time in the last few years on view, in any of the time they're in office, it all went away. So it doesn't surprise me that her initial response was a, uh, a counter-terrorism response. It is such an interesting question. I mean, I, you know, she addressed it in terms of people on suicide missions, but it's a very narrow way of looking at this question, which is a question which disturbs all Western democracies when the question is posed. Look at the four for in France over it, the banning of the hijab first and then the burqa. But it's she, a complicated question, and I think it does everybody in trying to answer it. Well, ex exactly. She answered that way precisely because she knew that whatever she said was going to be screened back in the United States. So she picked a very narrow mm. mould of it. And in Afghanistan. Vision. And in Afghanistan. Pakistan. Uh, that, that's true, that's true. But politically for her, mm. whatever her ambition is in 2012 yeah. or 2016, mm. these sorts of issues will, will crunch and have a big impact. But if you had Sarkozy answering that question, it would be about <coughs> liberty, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be about terrorism? Well, I think, Steve, the, the thing about the advocates for banning the burqa, they come from the left and the right. Mm. There are mm. those for whom um, the oppression of women is a reason, reason for them to advocate banning the burqa. There are those for whom... Um, displays of fundamentalist religion in a secular society they find mm. offensive, then there, are, then there are the attacks from the right. I'm in mm. a House of Parliament where the Reverend Fred Nile is, uh, has a private member's bill before us seeking to ban full face coverings. So, I mean, Ricky Ponting mightn't be able to walk out to bat at the SCG test with a cricket helmet on <laughs> if the Reverend Nile gets his uh, bill up. But, you know, my view is limits, yes. I mean, I think school kids should have the right and to yet, yet, see the face of their teacher. That's right. And yet, oh, I thought you were going to talk about the pupils because that's, that's one of the issues that's been very complicated in France, France in that absolutely. question because, of course, the French system is, is, a, is a secular education system. If, however, you tell girls that they can't come to school wearing a burqa, there is a danger that those girls are then going to drop out of the mainstream, mainstream system and that is the last thing that anybody in France wants. Sure. They've already got problems, serious problems with ghettos. They've got a, a fractured society. How do you keep everybody in the mainstream and defend your secular values at the same time? It's a complicated question, but you can force people into private uh, Islamic schools if you won't let them come to school sure. dressed in the way their fathers say they should be dressed. But, but picking up on the point before about liberty, I mean, you can argue the liberty argument in different ways depending mm, on what you right. want. You can yeah. argue the, yeah. the freedom of religion aspect and you can argue that, you know, particularly where you have a system of government where you're trying to separate the state and the religion, which France takes to the extreme, to heart, mm. uh, there is another aspect of liberty. But I did actually want to congratulate Luke. You are very solid on a lot of these issues, I have to say. I don't, I'm sure, not sure IPA praise would be uh, welcome, but in the New no, South no, Wales no, Labor not. Party. Uh, but <laughs> I was just saying, you're very good so far. I have to congratulate you. <laughs> well, a referendum is likely to be held in the next few years that will seek to recognise Indigenous Australians in the Constitution. The Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, said the principle has widespread support and she's setting up an expert panel to find out what's the best way of making it happen. This expert panel will include Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. It will include community leaders, constitutional experts and members of parliament. It will lead a national discussion and broad consultation in 2011 to build consensus about the recognition of Indigenous peoples in the constitution. Social Justice Commissioner Mick Gooda supports the move. This idea of going out to seek nominations for this expert panel is a really good starting point. It's starting to build consensus straight away. It's not just being a, a panel appointed by government through whatever means available to them. It's actually engaging with the community right from day one. We now have three years to build a relationship that will change Australia forever, I reckon. And uh, 
to, to the, the referendum will be the end point of that. We've got three years of fairly hard work in front of us to convince. I, I, I'm aiming for, I reckon we should set a bar at 90% people. But Larissa Brent, Professor of Law at the University of Technology in Sydney, says it's a very complex issue. I would think that just because there's already um, agreement across political parties about the fact that we should have uh, constitutional recognition, doesn't it all settle what the form of words would be? I think that's another area where we'll actually see quite a lot of debate. Luke Foley, to get a, const uh, to get a referendum passed, and there's only been eight out of 44 contested in our history, you need bipartisan support. Is this likely to get bipartisan support? I think there's the real potential for it. I think there's a challenge for our Conservative parties, but they should recall what John Howard said prior to the 2007 election. Uh, the New South Wales Parliament has done it in the last month. We didn't require a referendum. We were able to do it by legislation, but the Conservative parties supported it. I think the 90%, um, it's very sensible for him to say we ought to aim for that because the history of referendums is you get 90%. Or you don't get to 50% plus one. Mm. <laughs> and mm. we'll need the left and right of politics uh, to support this to get it through. It's about enshrining the principle that Aboriginal people are the first Australians. The criticism is it's symbolic as opposed to practical reconciliation. Um, I think both are important. Symbols have the potential to change and shape attitudes. That's, that's very true. It's very easy for people to be cynical about this and start talking about where the government is up to in, in, its, uh, in, in the intervention, for example, the housing, all of those practical questions, as people did after the uh, uh, apology to the stolen generations. But they forgot in doing so that that apology did mean a great deal to the people at, to whom it was addressed. It was obviously for the nation, but for those people it meant a lot. So we can't just get stuck on, yes, yes, but what about the houses? Of course those things are important, but you're right, it has enormous potency. Yes, but you also need to recognise that symbolism by itself uh, can mean a lot of people put a lot of uh, you know, uh, opinions or preconceived ideas into that, and if we do X, Y or Z and it's out of the way, then we no longer have to do the follow-up. And there's a certain amount of political capital on any issue any issue, mm. it doesn't matter what it is, that you can spend. And, you know, particularly during the Rudd government, we saw a lot of symbolism and not much substance. But that's the problem... But, uh, and, uh, yes, but that's the problem here, that what, what we're... Because this is the danger the... of becoming cynical, that because this is what this government has been accused of doing over and over again, is discussing and having well, committees and really being uninterested in symbols, this is the one that they should be doing. But, but I, I mean... I, after I praise you, I'm now disappointed in you, Luke. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I'm sure you're happy about that. That's over, Jim. <laughs> um, uh, but it's not just an issue for the conservative or, or liberal side of politics. It's also an issue for the left or the Labor side of politics as well. Whatever set of words actually gets put up in the end to mm. the community has to be... Um, sad to say in, in some regards, but ultimately for a purpose of a constitution, very dry and they have to be very reserved because if not,